You are now tuned in to the Next Dimension University broadcast. Come out of the Godnosphere and experience the next dimension in destiny with us. Be empowered and educated through any of the 61 and growing ministry career fields. We are a school of purpose. We are a school of destiny. We are poised and ready to prepare, equip, empower, and deploy you into your kingdom assignment. We are the lowest cost, fully accredited Bible college in Southern California today. And now, join us as your destiny began. Well, we're here at Next Dimension University. I'm excited to be here. This is a God house. The Godmosphere is in full effect. And we're here to learn the Word of God. We're not here to um, impress anybody. It's no formality. God is in control. And the bottom line is uh, we're passionate about stomping out, if you will, or to those of you that are, you know, snoozy and smart people and don't like to talk like using terms like stomping out, uh, eradicating, abolishing biblical illiteracy in the body of Christ. If you're in agreement with stomping out <laughs> biblical illiteracy in the body of Christ, would you get radical for a minute and welcome all of our viewers to the School of Destiny at Next Dimension University. And it's time to get the business. It's time to get the business. I'm gonna be talking today a little bit about homiletics, but more specifically, the homiletics of Jesus. Uh, he is the quintessential preacher, teacher, and communicator of the text. And so we want to observe his ministry and pattern our communication process after his ministry. All right? And that being said, I'm going to just do a little commercial. This is my book, Call to Be a Speaker. Okay? Every man and every woman of God here under the sound of my voice, you're called to be a speaker, okay? You might be sitting at a computer, or, you know, but that's not your greatest anointing. Your anointing is to preach the gospel. And guess what? All of us are called to preach the gospel. You don't have to be a clergyman with the, you know, the turn around white collar in order to preach the gospel, okay? Everyone here under the Godmosphere is called to get excited, get animated, be passionate about the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings of the Lord's death, burial, resurrection, and soon coming return. Are you excited about that? Then you ought to share that with somebody because the scriptures say, how can they believe unless they hear? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tithings of good things. It doesn't stop there. That 17 verse of that 10th chapter of Romans says, so then <laughs> faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in end time homiletics, the Jesus homiletics, you got to talk and talk and talk and you got to be repetitive. What did I say? You have to be repetitive. You have to be repetitive particularly when you're communicating under a prophetic influence, and that's end-time homiletics. It's a prophetic influence. When I say a prophetic influence, I'm not saying a pathetic influence, <laughs> okay? Because we need people that are going to be prophesying and not prophesying, amen? And usually when I'm talking about the prophetic anyway, I'm not referring to foretelling the future, I'm talking about forth telling what God said, just saying what God said. Tell somebody, just say what God said. Because there's an anointing in just the unadulterated, infallible, unchanging, uncompromising word of God. You just need to put it out into the atmosphere, and it has an ability in and of itself to revolutionize, to change, and to save, right? The Bible says there in John 6 and 63, your flesh profited nothing. But the words, Jesus said, that I speak unto you, their spirit, 
their life, their zoe. Amen. So don't try to adorn it. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Don't try to dress it up. Don't try to, uh, you know, become so physically animated. You will find your niche. You will find your prophetic flow as you do the word and as you major on the major, which is the word of God. The major is not your style, your your antic, your devices. That's not what you should be majoring on. You should be majoring on the word of God. We've got one book to master until Jesus returns, and that's the 66 canonized books that are contained in the B-I-B-L-E. So is there a revival of the Bible here at Next Dimension University? Tell somebody there's a revival of the Bible. Come on, say there is a revival of the Bible. Come on, say there's a revival of the Bible going on in Ontario, California. Tell somebody there's a revival of the Bible going on in Miami. There's a revival of the Bible going on in Atlanta. We pray that there's a revival of the Bible going on in Atlanta because we really need the word in Atlanta. Are you all with me? <laughs> but we need some word specialists. See, when I was 15 years old, I didn't want to, I didn't, you know, I did get the, the little black book from my organization, and I considered it a companion book, and I wanted to major in that book because, you know, I got, I wanted to cut my teeth on knowing all the Jewish diction bishops and all the mothers and elders of the church, you know. Uh, but there's, tell somebody, there's no anointing in that. <laughs> if you want power, you better major in the word of God. Amen? Amen? Anybody want power? You got a major in the word of God. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's get right into our lesson for today. So we're going to go to uh, two passages, and these are the passages that are going to be the premise for what we're talking about today. We want to look and observe the ministry, the teaching ministry of Jesus. He's the master teacher. What did I say? He's the master teacher. And we want to... Uh, copy, emulate, um, do as he does, as he do, all right? Do as Jesus do, amen? What would Jesus do? That's what we want to do. Is that all right, everybody? And I mean that specifically as we look at his ministry. We talked about this the last time we were together. We talked about the ministry of Jesus, the homiletic ministry of Jesus, teaching ministry was supernatural. So things happen when he was speaking, right? As a teacher, as a preacher, you may have your outline. You may master homily. You may master rhetoric. You may have a command of the English language, but we want to have a command of the God language. Amen? So all of that uh, is subservient, if you will, to mastering the Word of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to be a part of your discourse, all right? If the Holy Spirit is not governing your discourse, your discourse could be polished but not anointed. Tell somebody you need the juice. Jesus operated, the Bible says of the third chapter of Matthew's gospel, that uh, God looked from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was baptized. He was filled with the spirit. And then when he came into the, in the fourth chapter of uh, Matthew's gospel, the first verse, just, the spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward or hungry. And the Lord said unto him, so on and so forth. Jesus was influenced by the spirit. Okay, so when you look at the chronology of kingdom education, what's important in the kingdom? What's important in the kingdom of God as, as it relates to being educators and getting the scholarly approach to the word of God? What should we be looking for first? We should be looking to master soteriology, that is salvation, because everything that we do is about drawing people to Christ, okay? So God is mostly concerned with us bringing the message that will convert, the message that will change people. Jesus majored on the salvation message. 
all that he spoke, the content of his discourse was trying to get people to change. He was bringing the kingdom of God to uh, an otherwise um, manner of doing things that was not fulfilling. And that's why he talked about, it's been said of those of times past that you do things like this. But he went on to say, but I say unto you, thus and so. So we want, in, in hermeneutics, that's called the census planor, the census planor. Uh, that is the deeper, more fuller meaning of the text. So we want to know not only the surface of what the text is saying and how to communicate to God's people, but we want to be able, like Jesus did, from heart to heart, from breast to breast, Jesus, the Holy Spirit in Jesus communicated to the human spirit of men. And if you're cognizant of that, you are not going to try to be psychological with God's people. You're not going to target their mind and their suke and their emotions. We're not trying to uh, arouse the emotions of the people. That's why I particularly enjoyed uh, the teaching ministries back in the day of Fred Price, Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Cole, all of those uh, great Bible teachers because they were able to stand flat-footed and teach and don't have to play on your emotions in order to keep your attention. And if you, if you got a little sleepy, you just, you just say, stand up and keep on teaching. Tell somebody, keep on teaching. Because the devil is a real devil, all right? And life is for real. And people are getting sick for real. And people are dying for real. And so when you come to church, you don't want to play games because it's a real life existence that you're confronting on a daily basis. So you don't need philosophy. You don't need theory. You don't need to be emotionalized. You don't need sensationalism. You don't need an exhibitionist behind the podium. You need a general that's going to stand flat-footed and give you marching orders and give you the ammunition that you're going to need to confront a devil that has gone berserk. Are you hearing me today? The Bible said the wiles of the devil. So you've got to have your ammo. You've got to have your word repertoire all together because when you get out into the real world there are going to be opposition that's going to knock on your door and if you don't have the word you don't have a command of the God language you're going to be victimized by the enemy if you're in agreement with that give God a great big hand of applause James 4 and 6 says when you submit yourself, therefore, to God, you learn the God language, you learn the theology of God, you learn how God conducts himself, you, know, you learn what God uh, uh, is looking for in you, then you could resist Amen. the devil, and the Bible says he will flee from you. You look, that word of flee means one that runs in stark terror. So the enemy sticks his tail under his behind and runs from, so I don't understand people that are fearful of the enemy. Because the Bible says in 10, 7, 10, 19, 7, 10, uh, 17, Luke, every, 10, 19, 10, 17, the, 10, 19, every serpent and every scorpion, the representation of the enemy is under your feet. And so you ought to posture yourself as such. So let's get back to the chronology. Let's get back to the hierarchy. Let's get back to how... The things that we ought to be in particularly concerned about or major in as it pertains to kingdom Christian education, if you will. I want to know everything that there is to know about Christianity, salvation, because I need to defend my faith. Amen? So you got the master soteriology. Everybody say master soteriology. That is the study of salvation. Because Jesus talked to people, Jesus communicated with people, Jesus preached to people in order to do what? Get them saved. Get them converted. Not to impress them. Right? And if you are aware of that...
coming back. If you believe it, shout, Amen. Behold, He I'm expecting him today. Come on, do it. Do it. I wasn't in quite compliance, but I was talking to this gentleman, and he's like, I'm an evangelist, and, and, and he was like radical. He was like on fire. He was like nonstop. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I was like, I, and I shook his hand. I said, like this, Dr. Taylor, I said, are you a right man of God? <laughs> <laughs> are you on some medication or what? Because <laughs> he was like, And I was trying to share with him. He said, hey, I heard about you. I heard about you, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, yeah. But let me see if I can help you, all right? Because um, he ministered to people here, there, and there. I said, like, listen, the Holy Ghost, see, we, we got to learn the prophetic punctuation in the spirit, the pause, the period, the commas, the exclamation points. The Holy Ghost want to put you on pause so he can get a word in edgewise because you're so stuck on your discourse and the Holy Ghost have to be able to trump what you got to say because we're not just trying to be polished we want to walk in the anointing that destroys the yokes over people's lives this is in time master teaching training and equipping and thoroughly furnishing for them real devils that are out there when you are trying to minister to people. You better have a sense, a supra, super sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. You better have an ear to hear amidst your dialogue, amidst your monologue, amidst your discourse, amidst your lecture, amidst your preaching, amidst your teaching. You've got to ever be so sensitive and cognizant of the voice of God that's trying to reach for the objective of getting people converted. Getting people to change because they, we're still showing up in church, but we're not changing. We're still jacked up. 
tore up from the floor up, need a check up from the neck up. We're not changing. And the gospel, the word of God, the Bible is about getting a society to change. To get you to come up, repent, come back up to the penthouse of God. Repent. Because our forefather, Adam, caused us to go down to the dungeon of life as he committed high treason onto God and took on the devil as his stepfather. But Jesus came through 42 generations and went to Golgotha Hill, Calvary Cross, and redeemed you. The price is paid. Tell somebody, the price is paid. I am redeemed from the curse of the law being made a curse for me for it is written cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree so that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles so that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith tell somebody it's going to require some faith to walk into this thing grace is grace grace we wonderful grace grace wonderful grace but we're going to need your volition and we're going to need some faith in order for you to appropriate the blessings of the lord which make it rich and add no sorrow to it amen but let's get back we're talking about the homiletics of jesus everybody say homiletics Homiletics. everybody say homiletics It's not just rhetoric. It's not just mastering the English language. It's not just being an effective communicator. All of those items are part of it. But for the end time, for end time master students and end time master teachers, one of the greatest disciplines that you have to master is the discipline of yielding because you're so stuck on stupid you got such a stain on your brain and you got just want to do it one way this is the way this is the way this is the way and you give no room no space no maneuver maneuverability to the spirit of god he is the only one that can reach you okay it's it's not in the volume of our voice it's not in our articulation it is not in the impressiveness of our presentation. It is in two minutes (laughs) that I got. (laughs) In the two minutes that I have, amen? (laughs) All right, so in closing, we look at the homiletics of Jesus, we see that it was supernatural. We see that it was prophetic. We see that it was revolutionary. We see that it was transforming. Um, And there's so many, you guys have the assignment that you were supposed to watch and observe the narratives of Jesus. Uh, There were three particular narratives that we want you to watch his teaching ministry and extract uh, certain principles of homiletics. Um, But in conclusion, what we need you to do is make sure that you are aware that the teaching ministry is supernatural and it's prophetic and you must give way to the Holy Ghost okay that doesn't sound very impressive it doesn't sound like it's a fit for a chancellor to be talking about that in the collegiate environment we want you to get all the structures and all that you can get that from so many other colleges we are the next dimension university so we don't 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 try to pa- don't try to package us and you know put us under the heading or the categories of the schools that already exist. This is the next dimension. Amen. If you're in agreement with that, give God a great big hand of applause. Who Jesus? And there is homework in Jesus' name. This is the end. You know we're moving on because I I'm privileged as the, as the chancellor. My class can go on for si- well. Maybe not. Dr. Taylor might not let me do that. But um, we're moving along. And what I would like for you to do uh, is to review uh, those narratives that you gave me, that you're going to give me in your homework. I want you to review those on a prophetic, supernatural tip. Okay? The Bible said that signs following the word. 
Okay, Jesus had signs found. People were healed. People were delivered. People were set, made free through his teaching. Is that right? Is that right? And so we need to have signs that follow in timers, all right, master teachers. If you're in agreement with that, give God a great big hand of applause. And I need you to give me a commentary on that, elaborate on that, and um, submit that in the next time we come together. All right. All right. All minds clear. That being said, we want those of you that are listening to the School of Destiny telecast, we're excited to have you as an honorary member here, student body, as part of our student body. But we want you to become a legitimate, credible student. So give us a call at 888-206-4344. We want you on this journey. We're stomping out biblical illiteracy globally. We're equipping God's people for end time ministry. Your call to the fivefold, we want you to be equipped. We don't want you uh, faking the funk, if you will, and just pretending and uh, we want you to be fully and thoroughly equipped for the call of God that rests so heavily upon your life. So God bless you until the next occasion. This is Dr. McLeod in the School of Destiny signing out saying God will bless you. God will continue to keep you as we together continue to strive for the masteries that are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless you. Let's give God a great big hand. Thank you for listening in to our broadcast. Now log on to nextdimensionuniversity.com and register for your next season of formal training and preparation. If you do not know your calling or just want to enhance your knowledge, Next Dimension University is clearly your next step. So embrace your destiny and be the best you can be. Yes, your destiny starts with us. Your destiny starts today.